Meguiar's presents Car Crazy, the show that focuses on the people behind the cars. And now, our host, Barry Meguiar. Most kids like to play with cars, but for some, it becomes an obsession. This type of person, and there are millions of us, have an unusual preoccupation with cars. And sometimes, it is not at all rational. Indeed, we are talking about people of all ages and all walks of life who are certifiably car crazy. Hi, I'm Barry McGuire, and I've spent my entire life working and associated with people who are crazy about their cars. This show is intended to gain insight into these people and understand why they are so car crazy. It's been called a contagious disease, and we hope this show will help you catch the bug, if you haven't already. Today on Car Crazy, we'll meet the man who personifies the term, the king of late night himself, Jay Leno. And his real life car father, stories will warm your heart and make you laugh more than ever. Car Crazy will be right back with Jay Leno. Welcome back, folks. Jay Leno, host of NBC's Tonight Show, has been an avid car collector for a long, long time. His collection of classic sports and historic automobiles, along with his many motorcycles, is truly amazing. And when he's not entertaining millions of fans nationwide with his unique brand of humor, he's probably outtending to one of his gems, or swapping car stories with like-minded motoring enthusiasts at a car show. In 1997, Jay was honored with the McGuire's Award, presented to the Collector Car Hobby's Person of the Year. He's a regular at the world-renowned Pebble Beach Concord Elegant, where in 1999, he not only had time to dish out a few laughs on stage, but also took first in class with his beloved 1934 Duesenberg J. Murphy convertible cruiser. His passion for automobiles and motorcycles has been demonstrated in every way possible. Whether he's leading the pack of Harley Davidson's as the Grand Marshal of the Love Ride, the world's largest motorcycling charitable event, or inspecting the engine of his next classic ride, Jay Leno is definitely car crazy. A lot of people, when they become successful and have a few extra bucks in their pocket, they become interested in cars. But others are crazy about cars from childhood, all their life, and when they become a little bit successful and have a little bit of money to spend, they just start doing a little more of what they were doing throughout their entire life. And that certainly is the case with our, our next guest. We're delighted to be with the, the host of the Tonight Show, Jay Leno, and the consummate car collector. Why, thank you. Thank you very much. I guess that's true. <laughs> Great to have you on the Well, show. thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. This connection that we have with cars, how, yeah. do, how do you explain it? It's... Yeah, it's sort of a bonding thing, I think, as a little kid. You know, my dad, uh, my dad had Chryslers and then he had Fords. So as an adult, I kind of gravitated towards those cars because my dad had them, you know, that type of thing. Now, you got your first car, like age 14, you bought this car and started working on it. But a 34 years. Ford pickup truck. That was 14, right? Yeah, I had go-karts before that, but we had a driveway that was about, uh, oh, a couple hundred feet long. And I would practice going, you know, my biggest fear was that I would not know how to drive a stick. I'd be the only kid, you know, the kids worried about you know, flunking grades or not making the football team. I would go to bed, but what if I can't drive a stick? What if I don't know how? What if I, don't, I can't learn? And then he'd wake up again. I would have this nightmare that I wouldn't be able to drive a stick. I, I think we all had that. You know, and then I'd, I would just practice going up and down the driveway for like hours. And my mother would be doing the, standing over the kitchen table and they're, and finally, all right, that's enough. You know, I would just go up and back for two years until I got my license. Well, can you remember that first day? Yeah, I rolled my mom's falcon. It was a very uh, memorable day. <laughs> you rolled yeah, her falcon? Like, on the, the first, first day? No, actually, it was the first couple of days, actually. <laughs> and then, uh, well, I always remember this. I always remember this. So I remember I coming back about 11 o'clock, and you know my parents are asleep ready, and they knock in the bedroom door. And then, oh, what was it? And then, uh, an accent, you all right? Yeah, yeah. Is it bad? No, no, it's just, you know, it's not too bad. A couple all right, look, don't worry about it, son. That's going to happen. You know, you, you bump into somebody, you look at it tomorrow, you know. So I'm asleep, and I hear, the hell is that? The hell is that? I'm screaming, my father's, what the hell? I run out in the garage, and the roof is only this high. 
because now I had rolled it, so it looked like it had been chopped. And he had to crawl out through the, through the window. My father, what the hell happened there? I said, the car tipped over. When he was going down the road, it tipped over. What do you mean it tipped over? Car, it tipped over. You know, you know, when you were a kid, you come up with those excuses. <laughs> now, apart from comedy, you had a lot of car-related jobs. Yeah, yeah, I worked at, uh, I used to work at a Ford dealership where I was in charge of odometer recalibration. That was my area. A car would come in with 80,000 miles, which is obviously a mistake. A car like this couldn't have any miles. You corrected miles. the, the problem. I, we, I would have to correct the mileage. We would go through three black and decker drills a week. You'd plug them in and <laughs> come back in an hour and the drill would be smoking. Hey, I'm 22,000 miles. That's good. That's good. Pull the drill out, throw them back. You know, those, you know that's what we used to do. You know. Now, this was in Boston, right? Boston, yes, yes. In fact, I remember a guy came in once with, uh, with like a 66 Chevy. This is in 67. Oh, and it had like, you know, 55,000 miles on it. Made a deal for a car. We took his car in the back. <laughs> Turned it back to about 15,000. The guy said, that's it. I'm not, give me my Chevy back. He oh. drives out. <laughs> An hour later, comes back. He's all smiles. I think we can make that deal. Oh, yes, sir. They made the deal. They gave him whatever he wanted. And throw in a couple of oil changes, too. I worked at a Ford dealership in Wilmington, Massachusetts. And then later on, I worked at Foreign Motors of Boston, which was at that time, really exotic, Citroen SMs, uh, Peugeot, uh, we had Mercedes, we had Rolls Royce. So that's what we used to do. But then, yeah, I worked at the dealership in Boston, and then we'd drive to New York every night. Doing gigs every Doing night gigs. and back, oh, back yeah. at work the next day. Yeah. Was, yeah. In fact, one day I delivered a Rolls Royce to a guy. I had to take a Corniche convertible. Show you how long ago it was. It was 71. And a brand new Rolls Royce Corniche convertible was 29.9. So what is that, 10 times that wow. now? So. It was 33000 out the door. I drive it down to New York to deliver it. The guy wants to give me cash for whatever reason. So I have cash in this paper bag, and I go to the Rolls-Royce dealership in uh, Paramus, that's where they were, to pick up another Rolls to drive back. But I figured, well, I'll stop at the Improv in New York and do a comedy set. So like an idiot, I park this brand new Rolls on 44th and 9th, like the worst <laughs> area, and I have $33,000 in a paper bag. <laughs> So I go to the club and I put my paper bag on the piano. Well, I just said, it's my lunch. I put it there and I do a set and ah, everybody's laughing, every joke worked. I have my tape recorder. Ah, I get back in the car, I'm driving, I get to Greenwich, I'm listening to my comedy tape and I get to the first toll booth and I get in to pay. Oh, I can see it and I realize, oh man, I left the 33,000 at the club. <laughs> so it's just like an hour. So I turn around and now I'm going like 100 all the way back to New York in this Rolls and it's now three o'clock in the morning and there's some piano player playing. And I said, oh, I, left my, I think I left my lunch in the piano. And whew, luckily it was, but I would just be getting out of jail now, actually. Yeah, <laughs> right about, yeah, right about. More or less. Yeah, if I had, oh my God, it was like my nightmare. Now, when did you come to LA for the first time? Oh, I came to LA in the uh, early 70s, I guess 71, 70. I would come back and forward and looking for work and that kind of stuff, and then finally moved out in 73. When you moved out here, mm -hmm. um, it seems to me you didn't have a ride, didn't even have a place to sleep. No, no, I just kind of friendly waitresses and whatnot, club owners. And, you know, comedy community is pretty tight knit. Everybody kind of crashes at somebody's house. And the first car I have, I still don't have out there, my 55 Buick Roadmaster. With the, it's got the Oldsmobile engine in it. And I think I paid 350 bucks for that. And still got it. And that's a fun car. You bought that after you came to LA? Yeah, yeah. I remember I bought it. It's the first car my wife and I ever made love in it. And, and I said, you know, the other day I said, oh, it's our 20th anniversary. Let's see if we can make love in the car. Go, ah, my back. Ow, you're on my hair. Ow! I said, you know, you can't, uh, you can't. Wasn't, that. wasn't quite the same. It doesn't, it doesn't no. work. No. We'll be back with more of Jay when Car Crazy returns. Welcome back to Car Crazy. You, you are so busy. You have so many demands. Oh, so, so demand. <laughs> Just from the wax industry. <laughs> But seriously, I think of all the, all the work. I mean, comedy, you've got to stay current every day, and yet everybody knows you have an encyclopedic knowledge of cars. I mean, how do, you, how, do you, how do you find time to learn so much about these cars? Well, I just don't learn the more important things. You know, I just don't know things I should know. Uh, to me, these things are more important. Oh, I don't know. It's what I like to do. It's a hobby. It's fun. I, I mean, I'm not one for baseball statistics. I'm not one for sports. I couldn't tell you who was in the Super Bowl. But this is what I like to do. I mean, it's what I always like to do. Uh, I mean, these are the cars I used to dream about when I was a kid, the Duesenbergs and the Bugattis. And I mean, I live in the kind of town where uh, you never saw one. You know, I can remember if a Corvette went through town, 
It'd be the talk of the Dairy Queen for like a week. You know, it might come back again. And we would hang around every night at that time, you know, at 1045, waiting for the Corvette to come through again. I remember one guy, one time, I can still remember it, in 1969, an Espada, a Lamborghini Espada went through town. I saw it. Well, let me tell you what it was like. You know, and everybody's, ooh, what was it? Well, you know, everybody's sitting at my feet. Okay, it goes, it's going about 30, okay? I mean, it was like, that's what it was. It was just sort of an exciting time for, you know, it's one of those things you either get it or you don't. And uh, being a kid, and especially in Massachusetts, you know, I got my road and track hidden behind my math book and it's snowing outside. And, you know, reading about all these kind of cars, because you never saw an exotic car where I grew up. You saw the Galaxy or maybe a Galaxy 500 XL. <laughs> now, was your dad a car guy? I mean, how, where did this start? Where did it come well, from? Well, my dad uh, my dad was a prize fighter and a bunch of other things when he was a kid. And he was kind of a street kid. And then he put himself to school and became an insurance man. He, was, he always said, if you go into automobiles, go into ignition, because you don't get dirty. But no, my dad was not a car guy in that sense. Um, I remember when I bought, uh, well, I mean, I've told this story, but the first car, when I was 16, you know, we'd go up to buy a car, and the whole family would go. You know, we'd go up to Shawshine Motors, and my dad would buy what was on the floor. Like, if there was a red four-door, well, that's all they have is a red four. You know, the idea of ordering a car to my father was... So, anyway, so I said, why don't we order a car? Okay, so we go up there, and hey, we get the big, get the big Galaxy 500. They had a model called the 7 liter. You know? So I said, Dad, why don't you get the 428? We don't need a big VA. Oh, no, you know, my mother, oh, let the boy pick the engine. What difference does it make? So I'm with the salesman. I remember the salesman name was Tom, and he got the 428 police pursuit interceptor package. You know, I'm checking muffler delete option, nah, nah, nah. you know, 390 gears, blah, blah, blah. So this car comes in about, <laughs> about five weeks later. We go up to look at it. My father, hey, it's kind of a racy looking thing there, isn't it? Oh, no, Dad, they all look that way. You know. My father puts the key in it. He goes, I there's a hole in the damn muffler, there's a hole in the muffler. He's screaming, the guy, oh, Mr. Leno, you checked muffler delete. You just wanted glass pack. What? Now my father's like glaring, glaring at me, you know, and he's so mad that he just puts it in gear and he nails it and fishtails across the parking lot. My mother is screaming in the back and, and then uh, my, my father always said he hated that car, but then one day in his drawer I found a ticket. He got a ticket for going 110 with it. Yeah, on Route 495, so he always enjoyed that car. Till I put it around a tree <laughs> many years later. <laughs> Incredible. Those of us who know you look at you as the consummate car collector because yeah. you never sell anything. I mean, you well, don't you sell it. You just, you just collect. That's That's sell you things. Collect. What kind of talk is that? Sell, get out, get out. <laughs> yeah. You love car shows. A lot of celebrities go to car shows, but they kind of hide out somewhere. You don't know where they are. Well, You're I like cars. There. I'm not much for the car show thing. I like seeing the cars. I mean, the trophy thing seems gets a little silly, and guys get a little juvenile, you know, and, uh, hey, wait a minute, I should have won. You know, you get a little yeah, of that. Yeah. And so I, I try to keep a little low profile, but it's fun just to go and talk with car guys. But you're out there on the lawn all day long talking. Yeah, talking that's what I like to do. Guys. You love that's that. That's what I like to do. It's, I it's mean, fun. It's, it's, it's fun, fun to watch you do that. Yeah, and me? most car people don't have any interest in show business, so they want to talk cars. So every now and then you got to, hey, my uncle plays the spoons. Uncle Bob, come on over. This is something you should have on the show. <laughs> You know, you get that a lot, but it's all right. With all you're doing in the business, but the car hobby is still a major part of your life. Yeah, it's really all I do when I'm in. That's how I justify being in show business. You know, I don't, I mean, you make good money in show business, but I'm not very good with money. I mean, I go, so if I give you this green stuff, you'll give me that shiny thing. <laughs> well, that seems like a good deal. Seems good. I mean, you know, I'm not much with investments. And, okay, I'm, I give you a bunch of these, and I get this big carburetor thing. Wow, look, it's, this is better looking than that. I'll take that, you know, I, I'm more like, you know, people trading with natives. <laughs> you got a lot of friends in the car hobby. You have more friends in the car hobby or in the business? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's all sort of, uh, um, you know, show business is fun, uh, but yeah, I, I don't make it my life. It's my work and I like it. Um, I, I don't get all involved in it, so it's good to have two sets of friends. You know, your show business people get a big kick out of coming to The Tonight Show. And the Tonight Show people get a big kick out of coming and seeing cars. So yeah, they kind of intermix. You know, it's a mixed marriage. Yeah, so many great cars here. And, and, and I've walked around a number of times with you, and you know everything about them and their history in the background, the gear ratio and displacement and all that. Are there favorites? I mean, from the Mercer race about to your Morgan to your... To your Favorite car? Um, that Duesenberg's pretty good there, that green one, because that's sort of the epitome of the... Well, that's probably the greatest American car, I think. 
believe it or not, that's considered the sport model, even though it's 142 and a half inch wheelbase. But uh, gee, it's a great car. You can drive it. You don't have to stay in the slow lane. You know, you can go 80, 90, 100, 110 in that thing all day long, and, and boy, it just keeps pulling. It in its day, it was probably like an F40 Ferrari. Yeah. Beautiful car. Uh, I know you don't. Um uh, count trophies and all that, but I do recall you drove that car across the, yeah, the ramp at Pebble Beach and won best of class there at the yeah, most yeah. famous car show in the world. It's not bad. No, no, that was fine. That was fine. I, I just kind of keep my head down and, you know, if you win an award, that's great, but I, I don't go nuts for that. I mean, I bring the cars to Pebble, so it gives them some pedigree. You know, with Bugattis, you have situations where five were made and ten still exist, you know, and when you start with something like that, when you take something like that to Pebble, you know, 10 years from now, someone could take the engine out of that, put in another one, put another engine in this, and there'd be two of those. Well, you can prove in 1998 or 99, no, that car existed in this form. And, you know, and uh, we've reached a point now where even experts can't tell real cars from fake cars because guys are so good. So if you have a continuous history on it, it's just, you don't really own these cars, you just save them for the next guy. You know, when I was a kid, my, you know, my parents would put vinyl seat covers over the upholstery. You know, we were always saving the seats for the next family. You know, we'd have to peel your back off so a family we never met would be comfortable in our car. I'd never quite understood, but so that's what you do with this, you know. What was your car craziest experience? I remember I was driving my Morgan one day down the road. Now, I'm going down the road and I'm sliding around the corner, and ba bam, 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 and two cylinders, you know, when it's making all kinds of noise. And I come around the corner and I go, ah, there's a cop with a radar gun. I go, oh. Oh, I'm screwed. I'm screwed. So I go by the cop and I stop. And I go, hey, I go, hey, Jay. And I said, how fast is I going? He goes, 35. I said, 35. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I thought I was going 70 because it's, it's two wheels, it's three wheels, and it's bang, you're sitting on the ground, and I'm sliding around the corner. And I wasn't even, the speed limit was 40. And he goes, 35. Huh? You know, I'm holding on like this, and women are putting on lipstick and Honda Civics passing me. But it's the feeling, it's just fun. Talking with Jay is fun. And we'll do it some more when Car Crazy returns. Welcome back, everyone. What do you think for you is the best part of the car hobby? Ah, oh. best part of the car hobby? What do well, you, you know, I remember once when I was a kid reading that uh, Edward G. Robinson, the actor, had a big art collection. And he said sometimes he would come home at night and get a chair and a glass of wine and he would look at this particular Renoir, whatever painting it was. And I used to think, well, that's nuts, you know, sit and stare at a painting, that's that all day. But you know, sometimes I come in here and I sit and I look at the dudes and go, oh, that's, you know, I just kind of sit there 15 to 20 minutes and just sort of look at the, the shape and the design and oh, I guess that's what Edward, I guess that's what he meant. You know, most people don't think of cars as art. You have this theory about 100 point cars and not I do. making the treasure queens, but no, really no, no. Driving. I mean, you, you sort of. I think you should start at 100 points, drive it down to about three points, and then restore it back up to. Yeah, yeah. I know, that's what yeah. I like to do. It's, Everything here was 100 points at one time, and now the various. You know, I mean, you have to use them, and you have to keep the people in business. To uh, who? Uh, my other great fear is that the hobby's getting older and older. I, I mean, I see it's all gray-haired guys like me at these car shows now. That's why we set up the scholarship with this McPherson College thing, so to keep kids interested. I mean, you know, when I see a kid that's interested in the car, I take him for a ride. But I go to car shows, don't touch this car, unless you're naked, get away from here. You know, and the, they, they got the thing and the barking dog noise, and, and people go, oh, I don't want to, I mean, how are you going to get interested in something if you don't, if you don't experience it, you know? So uh, whenever- Time to give a plug for McPherson College in yeah, Kansas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they are really training craftsman for the future, yeah, so there will be somebody to work on these People don't know how right? to work. You have in a lot of these cars lost technology. I mean, my steamer, if you drove my steamer and said to a mechanic, fix it, I think he would sit there all day and not know what's what. Are car crazy people really crazy, or are ever, is everybody else crazy for not being car crazy? Hmm, this is a philosophy <laughs> show now. Well, you know, it's interesting, because when I was a kid, my dad was always a dad and all the neighborhood dads were dads. It wasn't until I came to California, I met dads that had hobbies or rode motorcycles or did undad-like things. You know, I was my dad's hobby. You know, I'd cut the lawn, we'd work on something, we'd fix something, but my dad never had a hobby. I always remember my father going, what are you buying a stick shift? Get the automatic so you don't have to be shifting all the time. What do you want with that? 
He, my father couldn't understand why I would buy an old car when you could buy a new car. It made no sense. I remember I bought my dad a new Cadillac one day. I started to make some money. I always remember the Cadillac salesman. It was a white Cadillac with red interior. I remember the guy said, do you want the regular interior or the interior de elegance? So of course, my father, being Italian, had to have the interior de elegance. And my mother was from Scotland, so she was always embarrassed. And she would always ride in it below level of the door. Because she would always say, you know, we're not Cadillac people. So my father would look as if he was driving down the street talking to himself when my mother would be sitting below the door because she didn't want to be seen in a white Cadillac oh, with my. red interior. You know, and, and my father, you know, my boy bought me this. My father, my mother, we're not Cadillac people. Anytime anybody asked about the car, my mother would always make sure people knew that we weren't Cadillac people. We'll be right back right after this. Right, Jay? <laughs> Welcome back as Jay tells us about some of the cars in his collection. The McLaren that you just got. It is a great car, but you can't get involved. All you can do is get in trouble with it. You know, you're going along, ah, 140. <laughs> you know. So uh, it, in some ways, it's not as much fun as an old steamer or an old electric car. Where I have the kind of cars where people are amazed I'm physically able to make it to the destination. Not that I got there with any great haste or in any particular stopwatch time, just the fact that you drove that here? You got it there. I mean, I got stopped on my steamer the other day in the freeway. You know, it's 1906 and you're doing 70 and the cop pulls me over and, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, it's like sitting on a bar stool going 70. It was the oldest car they'd ever pulled over on the freeway. And it just made me laugh. And he's just, he's just amazed that you can do 70 <laughs> a car that's almost 100. He just would have talked and to it's you. it's made of wood and it's on fire <laughs> and it's got hot water on it. I mean, the steamers are one of the few cars you can be both burned and scalded to death at the same time. You can be burned and then ah, scalded with fire. It's, just, I mean, it's, it's a fabulous, fabulous car. We're delighted you have so much fun. With well, thanks. Cars. Thanks and, for having uh, me here. We, are, we have a lot of fun with you, and uh, thanks for being the highest well, profile thanks. guy in the, uh -oh. in the hobby. Uh -oh. Yeah, I mean, keep, uh, it, keep that uh, tonight show Try going. not to do anything and, uh, wrong. And, um, and we'll see you at the next car show. Okay. Well, that's all for now. This is such a treat for me to share some of the great people of my life with you. Hope you've enjoyed as much as we have, and I hope these stories will make you just a little bit more car crazy. Thanks for watching. Car Crazy has been brought to you by the Meguiar's family of Appearance Car Care Products. Meguiar's, the trusted experts in surface care since 1901.